were hired to keep working and doing the same thing all summer. So it's a real world. Uh, they were learning really important. Turn it. Not with the fingers, please. Okay. Actually, use the tool then. Yes. Okay. So let me see. Let me just kind of slide this up here and get my measure tool. Uh, I've got about uh, 25 miles long. Or were you? Click on add. Um, now, why can't I see it, folks? Order of display in the table of contents, right? So I can um, I can unclick the continents. Thank you, Stace. I can unclick the continents, or I can move this up, right? Here, sixteen thousand four, but not quite sure because you know who knows how they put this together. Some person has put these in a table someplace. The poor guy, sixty thousand one, sixty thousand two. Oh, I'm tired. No, it's some automated process. Thank you. And uh, if I sort this, I see the top smallest year value is 2004. And you can also see the month of the day, right? So when, this, when was it? The other thing is, how many times have you opened the project and there's three data frames and there's ten layers in every data frame and the whole thing of what you get to do is turn them on and off and answer six questions? That doesn't make for the old adrenaline rush. That's this kind of thing. So I... I personally think it's better if you let the kids build their own projects, and then it's theirs. So this these books are beautiful, and these books are beautiful, and these books are beautiful, and they often say, "Well, uh, you know, it's such a pretty book. I'm going to put this up on my shelf." <laughs> wrong, wrong. Do not put it up on your shelf. Cut it up. Put it up on the walls, as we've not done here. <laughs> Cut it up, put it up on the walls, because what you're seeing is all of these examples, and you just click. Well, do you have a picture of that? No. So I, I did the whole thing up, so. Input features, you can just drag this up to the oh, end. Cool. Wait, it doesn't matter. They're both pointing to the same end. Second lesson in module one, which is traffic report. And so what we're going to do together, uh, I'm going to add, because whether it's literature, whether it's science, whether it's history, uh, geography, tourism, this is a tool that can adapt. Or even marketing, or, you know, letting advertising. Okay, you've been fabulous. I know that you want, the, the teacher called me up and said, okay, my kids aren't liking this ARC stuff anymore. I said, well, have you mapped anything? <laughs> and he said, well, no, we're just going through our GIS tutorials. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, it's kind of hard to get excited about the tolerance of a snap thing. I said, why don't you take them out and have them map something? So he called me out there, and he came out there, and they had all these maps. And I picked up this one map, and it said, hot babes on campus. <laughs> and the, kid, the kid had taken his GPS, and every time he saw a hot chick, he marked it. <laughs> so he mapped it. And I said, well, you know, this is really not too politically correct, but this is a really, really good thing here. I said, so then they interpolated it. I said, well, should you interpolate it, or should you do a kernel density map? Did you put a kind of value off how hot they were? One through ten? Did you, say, did you just say hot bay? So there's a difference between <laughs> doing, doing, doing a bed or... So the other thing he did was he actually figured out where there were the most, and he says, okay, there's the most down to the snack bar, because that's where all the guys are. So I said, well, now you got two variables in here. So when they went outside and they did this, their maps were not prize winning. But there was a lot of really, really good stuff going on that they mapped, and it was like for high school. Up through the high desert, dropping way back around, or going way down through towards San Diego and back around, uh, but a, a guy named Mr. Bradshaw. That is an awesome view. That is an awesome view. GPS here? How can we go wrong? Oh yeah. Awesome. 
this is worth it. Okay, this part of the trail is a bit treacherous. We're on the side of a slope, slippery grass, big ravine there, uh, picking our way across. It's a slow going, let's just say that. We're picking our way up across the... Got some roots here. You know, but it's all part of the adventure. Um, if we live to tell about it, that is. Starting to think this is the adventure, not just Yeah, I, I just remember when I said it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Never mind. Ah, here come the rescue helicopters. Hey, man, there's a rescue. Wait, come back. And that is field work with a bunch of GIS people. Putting a little bit of a point on the end. Yeah, square the metal, very good. So you don't lose as much of the metal. If you get the metal too longer, people have been learning techniques and ideas, and this is just fabulous. Exactly what we wanted to have happen. We also want to make sure to be able to compare the before and after versions. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> of the before and after. Uh, images of Landsat images of the Gilman Ranch. Picture is while we were walking around the Gilman Ranch and we were mapping, uh, mapping the trail. And with the phone, I was able to take pictures and immediately upload these pictures to a Picasso photo album. And you can easily use Flickr and anything like that. And I, I should give Tom Baker credit for I, I just saw this methodology on come across his blog and uh, Twitter yesterday. So what I did, and when I click finish, you'll see the locations of the photos stream through a Geo RSS feed onto the map. And you can see where we hiked. And if you click on each photo, this binary image that shows you all of the locations that are visible and all of the locations that are not visible. Well, what a lot of people don't know is that this raster data set actually contains Can you kind of step us through that uh, sure. for a second? Yeah, the, turn on the extension, the map plus extension. Yeah. Scars and everything, but what is so ultra cool about this is, is now you can do an instant NDVI. In RGIS 10. In RGIS yep. 10? By click of a button. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. You don't have to okay. do band algebra. It's already, the algorithm is right there on that cute little Canadian maple. Icon, is that the most awesome thing ever? But anyone, is that the most awesome thing ever? But anyone, is that the most awesome thing ever? But anyone, we really need to take them out for a while. Sure, certainly, certainly. So. Before lunch or after lunch. Think about how we work. Uh, I would like for the children in Virginia to be able to make one decision other than how many pencils to take to that test. Because I think we are obsessed with that test. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're going to be talking about what was valuable about the experience. Why don't we do it in that order? First, what was what you thought was valuable, and second, how you think you might adapt it. So, and, 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 oh, just just for photographic purposes, oh, can I ask that the monitors be turned off? Thank you for photographing. <laughs> 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 Good. <laughs> how different they were, and um, how everybody's approach to what they wanted to implement with the software, and it was it was just great walking around today and seeing all the different ideas, and then of course the implementation of it and the finished product or semi-finished product for some of us and what it looked like. And definitely a wealth of knowledge. And